So the National Audubon Society is actually um, a large network across the United States um, that's mission is really to restore and conserve natural habitats for birds, um, which in turn is also going to be beneficial for people. The National Audubon Society has across um, the network over 40 centers. Um, we're the newest center and what's so wonderful about this is unlike other centers that really focus more on conservation, we're able to focus not just on conservation but about the artwork of John James Audubon. So we're able to take his artwork and actually bring it to life and use that as a place to teach and inspire people. John James Audubon is a very interesting character. He was actually born in Haiti but quickly moved to France and his father was a sea captain and his father had uh, sailed over to Philadelphia and when he sailed to Philadelphia he bought Mill Grove, he bought this property sight unseen. In 1803 when John was 18 years old the Napoleonic War began and his father didn't want him to be enlisted and so he sent John over here by himself with the idea that he could manage Mill Grove, which at the time was a farm, but there were also kind of um, rumors that there might be lead and copper in the grounds, and his father was really hoping that he might be able to see, you know, if that was a possibility. John got here, and let's just say uh, he wasn't really into managing a farm or exploring for uh, any of the copper or lead. He spent all of his time looking and hunting and drawing birds. And I do say hunting because 200 years ago, the only way that John could draw birds was to shoot them. And it's very hard for someone from National Audubon Society to tell that story. But without him being able to do that, he would never have had the drawings that we see today. Before Audubon lived here, actually the Lenape Indians uh, were here. And the, the house itself, when we renovated the historic home of John James Audubon two years ago, we decided to use that to tell the history of the property. And so it tells a story of moving from the Lenape Indians to as a, the colonialization. It became a farm. Um, when John was here, it was an active farm. Ultimately went into the Weatherall family where um, they were mining uh, lead and copper until it became in the hands of Montgomery County. So we call this a wow gallery. So that means that when you walk inside, the first thing you see is a life-size John James Audubon. And coming out behind him are pages of his um, elephant folio that are larger than life. And so as you walk through, the reason we call it wow gallery is because in addition to Audubon's prints that are huge, you are learning about why birds matter. What makes a bird so cool? Is it because you know the different adaptations they have with their beaks or their feet? Or maybe it's something like their nest or as I said before, their migration. And so we're using his artwork to really bring what we know about birds to life. And then as you walk through, all of a sudden, it becomes more and more interesting to you about why birds matter. And then you get to the back of this gallery and you have the amazing success story of the puffins. Um, the puffins were returned to the islands in Maine um, due to a big project by National Audubon Society. And we want people to walk out of here really falling in love with birds, but then thinking, what can I do? And so, you know, this is a big project but you could do things every day in your backyard, uh, in your life, to really help birds. And by helping birds, you're helping people. So one of the easiest things is planting native plants. Native plants are plants that were here before the colonialization of Pennsylvania. So basically that means is that those plants are what all the bugs and the birds in, in Pennsylvania learn to grow up on, live on, use for nesting. And also they don't need extra watering. They don't need any of the stuff that invasives or non-natives need. And so we have a database. All you do is go on National Audubon Society and you type in your zip code and it populates every native plant that you can grow in your area as well as where you can buy them. So if you plant native plants, it creates a lot of biodiversity, lots of habitat, and it is the easiest way to really do something positive. In addition to this wow gallery, behind me I have the gallery that's called Drawn from Nature. And so when you go into that gallery, it's more a serious art gallery that shows his Birds of America folio. And that's a book that's so large, has over 430, 435 um, prints of birds in it and he drew every bird life-size. In addition, not a lot of people know about his printing process. He actually would do an or original painting and it would have to get shipped across the Atlantic Ocean and it would be engraved on a copper plate and then it would be made into a print with women and their daughters painting it and shipped back 
to the United States or America. And that's what he sold. I mean, that is just amazing. The Sound Forest is a place that you can go in. You can be in different habitats like meadows or a forest or wetlands. Um, you see the specific birds that are found there. And then you can actually press buttons and hear what it sounds like. Um, I really love that component. The other component that's one of my favorites is we were given a grant by BNY Mellon and it allowed us to do three Audubon prints in 3D resin. So we have a great blue heron that you can actually use your fingers and feel what it feels like to feel their beak and feel their feet. So we have seven non-releasable birds on our property. We have a great horned owl, a barred owl, three screeches, a blue jay, and a broadwing hawk. Um, these are all birds that have uh, been deemed non-releasable, whether they were hit by a car um, or uh, two were imprinted. And so they, I use them as animal ambassadors. And so um, I actually can hold them and I can teach people about them. And anytime you come to visit the site, you can go see them. And we do have five miles of trail. So if you just like to hike and also canoes, we do canoe programs. So we have tons of fun stuff to do all seasons and uh, you you know, we just hope you come out and take a visit. Coming up in September, uh, we have the same space downstairs that we'll be programming. Um, it will be two additional galleries. One that's talking about how to make your backyard more bird friendly, and another one that's gonna be an art studio. It's gonna be called the Artist Nest, where people of all ages can draw and sculpt, and every day there'll be an ability to do some kind of art project. If you go a little further down the hallway, I have a classroom, um, and so it's the first classroom I've ever had in 10 years. I could fit a uh, whole uh, class of 30 in there, or 50. Um, if there's no desks and then we also have the pavilion um, the pavilion is attached and that can be used for uh, corporate groups it's for big field trips and also we have a big wedding uh, venue here uh, that we run about 85 weddings a year we want people to come here and understand that even though things might not always be perfect there are things that people can do. And so I feel this is the right time to inspire people to say, hey, listen, every day you can go outside and you can see a bird, but every day it's your job to make sure that those birds have a place to live. And healthy habitats for birds are healthy habitats for people. So I think this is the perfect time to make sure that people don't get upset about the things going on in the world, but really feel empowered to do something about it.